for all of the dialogue that there's been this season about OG Ananobi's failed steps to become a self-creating star, if there's one thing to take away from this series that isn't a Scotty Barnes positive, it's that OG Ananobi is creating on the biggest stage available to him and doing a damn good job of it. Before we get into all of that though, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm told it helps. Ananobi has, at times, flashed virtually everything you would want to see from a wing creator. It has been inconsistent, yes, because it's really difficult to make the wing creator jump, but also because his career has been inconsistent because of the weirdest injury luck we've seen in some time. Appendicitis, poked in the eye, lose a tooth, rammed in the leg, all these weird, not connected whatsoever injuries where it's not about the chain reaction of how his body responds. It's not like there's a load on this side of the body, so there's knee breakdown. No, it's just bad luck. Anyway, all of that aside, in the house of the 76ers and Raptors series, OG has found a room for his passion project, creation. Through two games, he's averaging 23 points on 65% shooting. And yes, the 76ers are still more preoccupied with Pascal Siakam, but... Ananobi has been the author of most of his looks regardless. And most importantly, over 60% of his looks at the rim are unassisted. Like here, let's take a look. A little pitch play above the break. Embiid is focused on the off-ball action with Precious and Fred. OG spies Harden as the low man and Yang as his primary. That's food. Straight to the bucket for two. And here, a little bounce pass initiate in the post. This season, he was their highest scoring, highest usage, and highest playmaking player out of the post. He's a fantastic post option, and he gets a little touch here for a baby fadeaway. The ball comes to a rest on the wing in his hands. Siakam sees what's developing and tries to drag Embiid out of the paint with him. So, OG bursts out of the triple threat and breaks a Euro to split the defenders and get to the front of the cup. And here... The Raptors flatten out to let him cook, and he busts out that step back with massive separation and creates a chasm between he and Green. Harris cheated over, but it didn't matter. Niang, isolated on the 45 extended, steal DeMar's huge sidestep and bust it out here. In game one, come off the pin down, split the hedge, find your shot. This is not the process of a 3 and D player. And for the record, he isn't. There's plenty of imperfections in his creation game, but as soon as you try and draw parallels between he and other players that might be considered 3 and D, the comparison starts to look silly. He creates too much, too often, in too many places. Now, does this mean that he is the massive hub from which you draw all of your offensive prowess? No, his handle needs to improve, his balance needs to improve, and if teams overload on him, we're definitely going to see mistakes being made. But when the 76ers are preoccupied elsewhere, it means that he is supercharged because he gets to go at his own pace and he gets to attack tilted defenses. We're seeing it on the other side too with Tyrese Maxey kind of unbuttoning the Raptors defense over and over again. If the Raptors are going to press the 76ers in the series, they're going to have to defend better, obviously. But when the games get close, the 76ers are going to have to choose who they load up on. Ananobi's play will complicate this calculus for them. When they're able to initiate him in the post, above the break, in isolation, wherever, and they're getting a return on investment, they're getting offensive juice from those plays. It means the 76ers have to consider, if we load up on Siakam, if these games are close, will OG Ananobi be our undoing? And he's putting forth performances that suggest he might be. They just have to get there with their defense so this offense can really pop in a more important context. He's been so good on offense that he introduces a pick-your-poison variable that most people probably thought wasn't going to come into effect in this series. There's even a version of events where we maybe don't get the Siakam Van Vliet pick and roll or the Siakam Trent dribble handoff, but rather a combination of Pascal and OG. Who will you surrender the mismatch to? When a player excels in the regular season, everyone asks to see it in the playoffs. When a player excels in the playoffs, just celebrate it. In a sea of problems for the Raptors, OG is on a surfboard. Here's the hoping he can keep 
bringing that offensive punch. And uh, who knows what this means going forward. But it's really fun for now. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm told that's important. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day.